Hey guys, Billy here. So it's finally time for that gear tour slash studio tour that I said I would do a little while back. So uh, yeah, I'll be going through everything I use to make my videos um, as thoroughly as I can. So I'm thinking I'll start off with what everyone wants to see, which would be the guitars. Then I'll move into more uh, audio equipment stuff. Then I'll move on, I'll move on over to the drums, and then finally I'll just give you a quick look around the room that I'm using. So uh, let's get started. Okay, first off we got my main guitar, my Widow Alder 8 String Deluxe. Try to walk you through the specs on this thing as well as I can. Uh, it's got a black walnut finish. It often comes up as a uh, gloss black in videos, but it's actually got a really nice wood grain under it. The neck pickup is a Seymour Duncan Sentient. The bridge pickup is a Lundgren M8, or Lundgren M8 if you're Swedish like me. The scale length is 29 inches, which is great for the low tunings that I fancy. Uh, what else? Grover locking tuners, got a Grub Gear fret wrap on there. Strings that I've got on this thing right now are Diodario um, 9 through 74. Looking to get something a little bit lighter since I got that scale length after all. Um, tuning wise, it's basically 8 string standard, but I've dropped the E, the F sharp string down to an E, giving me a drop E right there not perfectly in tune. Also at the very top here uh, I've got a um, half step between these two strings which isn't really conventional but I like to do a lot of the dissonant stuff so it helps with that and uh, yeah that's my main guitar. Love it to bits. Okay next up is the elephant in the room, the nine string. Bop bop ba. So this is an Agile Scepter Elite 930 uh, in the Lizard Burst finish. Very pretty piece, I would say. It's got a monstrous 30-inch scale length, uh, and the strings on it right now, I believe, are from Kalium and 9 to 90. Quite thick, if I may say so myself. Um, sadly, I don't use this guitar a whole lot because the setup is really bad. Got lots of rattle. You might be able to hear. There it goes and it won't keep a setup for some reason. Uh, I gave it to my friend Cedric uh, so he would try to fix it up and he did and by the time I got it back it was rattly again so I don't know. Might have to get that fixed up at some point in the future but yeah. When you see me using this in a video generally I will have recorded that part on my 8 string um, and I'm just like it's in the register of a 9 string so if I have I play this in the video so I don't have to switch tunings in the middle of the song and whatnot. But yeah, you, you haven't heard this in a song uh, in quite a while. Sadly, sad but true. It's a pretty piece, but not in a usable state right now. The pickups in this thing are both stock. I'm not entirely sure what that is. Let me look that up real quick. What is research, guys? Okay, they're apparently just called Cepheus 9. Cepheus 9! Very nice. All right, next guitar. Keep hitting everything on the way back. Okay, up next is this J and D Brothers Stratocaster copy. I have not been able to track down much more information than that about it. I got it for free from a family member, and um, it's not great. It's obviously a very cheap guitar, but uh, it's pretty cool to have the single coil pickups for that twangy clean stuff. So. Yeah, I mainly use it for that, if I'm doing some really tholly cleans, you know, soaked in reverb and delay and stuff. Yeah, don't have much info about this one, but yeah, it's there. It's increasingly difficult to grab these guitars. Ah, come on. Okay, next up is my bass. Uh, this one is kind of mysterious. I don't know if I've ever told this story. This is the first instrument that I ever owned for myself, and thusly it is the apple of my eye, you could say. Uh, I'm very attached to this bass, but basically um, I bought it used on what you could call Swedish Craigslist, I guess, it's called Blocket And uh, it was sold there as a Wudo B6, which is how I first found out about the Wudo brand that my eight string is from. I picked it up, great price because there's a bit of a damaged spot right here in the in the lacquer. Basically, uh, I go on thinking this is a Wudo bass. Uh, I buy another Wudo guitar, and then it strikes me that 
this logo up here, that's not the logo of Pluto at all. Actually, it says H and K there. It's got a picture of a wolf. So I, I looked that brand up, and um, yeah, that's the thing, apparently. That would make you think that this base is actually made by H and K. But, you know, other than that, it looks just like a Wudo B6. So I was still a bit confused. And then when one of these tuners broke, I still thought this was a Wudo, no doubts about it. And I emailed Wudo and asked, hey, do you, do you have any tuners in that nice golden finish? And they said, yeah, we do. And they sent me two of them and they were identical. And what's more, there's actually a W on the back of each of those, if you can see that. So, you know, that looks like Widow's log logo right there. I don't know, it's like it's some amalgam between Widow and H and K, and I'm super confused. I should really contact Widow about that, but yeah, either way, it's a fantastic base, no matter what brand it is. So yeah, specs on this bad boy. It's got a stained walnut finish and gold hardware, which is a super pretty color combination if you ask me. Uh, it's got a monstrous 35 inch scale length, which makes low notes sound lovely and buttery smooth. It's got fancy multiband EQ, it's got a passive active switch, and it's also got a kill switch. You bop that and no signal will come through, which is nice if you're uh, switching out the cables and whatnot. The string set is a Kalium 45 through 182, so that's quite a thick string at the bottom there. So um, this I tune an octave below the 8th string, which means this lowest string is an E. So the lowest string here is an E, an octave below what you'd have on a regular 4 string bass, which is quite low. Um, I used to have a 200 string for this one. Um, which was monstrously thick and um, it also didn't have any clarity at all so I backed it down to 182 and I've been really happy with the results I'm getting with this. So essentially this is a six string bass but rather than having one lower string and one higher string than you would typically would on a four string bass it's just got two lower ones. You got the low B and the low E below that. So yeah, love this bass. I also have a second 6-string bass, which is an ESP LTD B206 with a spalted maple finish. Um, I don't have that one here, uh, it's actually at my good friend E Sucks place. He's been doing a setup on it, I just haven't picked it up yet, so I really have to do that. Sorry for keeping you waiting for so long, E Suck. I, I appreciate you. Okay, so that's all my guitars, let's move on into audio equipment, and I'm actually going to use my phone to be a bit more portable with the filming here, because it has the gift of autofocus. Okay, so first off, my studio monitors, this one and this one, are Yamaha HS7s, and they are quite good. So when I mix my music, it's generally a trade-off back and forth between those and these Focusrite Scarlett Studio HP60 headphones. And if we look down by my feet here, then there is a M-Audio BX 10-inch subwoofer that I use both for audio production and just for listening, because subwoofers make things sound great. Moving on to microphones. Hi, Lexi. Hi, Pony. You want to be in the video? And moving on to my microphone, it's actually what I'm recording my voice through right now. Uh, it is a Shure SM7B, it was my dream microphone for a good while before I could afford it. Uh, it's very good. And that is mounted to a Rode, or Rode as you might prefer saying, uh, PSA1 boom arm. I like this one a lot also. It's very easy to post your microphone where you need it, whether you'll be sitting in front of the computer or standing up. So yes, I like that one a lot. That then runs through a Cloud Microphones CL1 Cloud Lifter, which is giving me a heck of a lot uh, of clean gain for this microphone. And then finally that goes into this Focusrite Scarlett 2i2 interface. This is also what I use to record guitars now. It's actually quite a new thing for me to be using the Scarlett interface to record guitars with. Uh, up until just recently I've been using this Line 6 GX one. Uh, along with Podform, and it served me great for a good couple of years. I still use this one to play backing tracks though for when I'm filming drums, guitars, bass, vocals, etc. I 
because you can easily adjust the volume with this big knob even though I'm not anywhere close to my computer because the cable is really really long so yeah it's not it's not out of commission just yet up next to the computer that I use to record mix edit uh, upload all that stuff is this one right here this is actually a gaming laptop uh, this is the Asus ROG Strix GL702VMBA230T. Jesus, that's a long name. Yeah, that's what I use though. It's very good. Works for gaming as well. On the software side of things, I use Kako's Reaper to mix, record, and produce. I use Addictive Drums 2 for my drums. I use Audio Assault, uh, Grind Machine, and Dirt Machine for my guitar tones. Um, and I use Adobe Premiere Pro to edit my videos. And for the final piece of audio equipment, these are the in-ear monitors that I use when I play drums. These are the Shure SE 315. Uh, my parents gave me these for my birthday one year ago. Uh, it's my birthday today actually, so that's one year on the day. Thanks mom and dad, I appreciate it. Um, so yeah, these are really great. Uh, they isolate the sound of the drums very well, which is very important. Take care of your ears. And they also give you a really clean, detailed sound, so you don't get lost in all the boomy frequencies. So yeah, I can recommend those. And speaking of it being my birthday, I just got this really nice chair a just a few hours ago. Uh, this is an AK Racing 7012, and it's really fantastic from what I've used so far. This is the most important function right here. But can you do this? I'm hitting the wall, but I can actually go a lot further down. <laughs> so I got this from my significant other, Jenny, her family, my family. Uh, a lot of people came together to find me a really nice chair, and I appreciate it a lot. Um, I've been having back problems and uh, butt problems from my older chair, so yeah. Being an ergonomic is gonna help, I'm sure. Drum time. So, the basic kit that I've got is a Tama Imperial Star, which is kind of a budget uh, kit, but it's been doing great for me. I've had it for a whole lot of years. So, okay, let's go over some sizes, I guess. So, the snare is a 14 by 5.5 inches, I believe. Got a 12 by 9 inch rack tom. Got two floor toms right here, which are both 16 by 14, although this is one is tuned lower. My kick drum is 22 by 18 inches, and I've got a Pearl P122TW double, double pedal on there. Jeez, it's really hard to remember all these long names. Um, Alright, I guess we're moving into drum heads. For my snare, I've got a Remo Weather King coded controlled sound uh, with a black dot on the bottom. And I believe I got the stock Evans head on the bottom of that. Same with the Toms, TBH. I got the Remo Clear Emperors for my batters on all my Toms. And I just recently got this Remo Power Stroke P4 Clear for the kick drum batter, along with the Gibraltar kick pad right there keep it stronger. Okay, moving into cymbals. Uh, I'm gonna notice a whole lot of these are broken. Some of them are broken myself because of intense use over many years. Uh, a lot of them I was actually given for free by friends because they're broken though, since uh, I'm programming my drums for the time being anyways. So uh, okay, let's start from left to right. This actually came with the drum kit. It, this is a Minel HCS 14-inch um, hi-hat. Uh, really cheap beginner stuff, but it sounds good to me actually. This one, this is an 8-inch splash from the same series. Minel HCS 8-inch splash. Right here we got a Peisty Alpha Metal Crash, 17 inches. Right here another Peisty Alpha. Uh, Piesty, I guess is the proper way to pronounce it, sorry. A 16 inch rock crash. Here's a Minel Classics uh, 8 inch high bell. I had to get one of those after listening to Lamb of God for so long to get the signature ding. Right here is my favorite symbol, which is sadly breaking. This is a Minel Bysands 18 inch medium thin crash. I love the sound of the Bysands series and if I have the funds someday I'd love to have a full setup of Minel Bysands, but 
symbols are incredibly expensive, so not right now. Uh, right here we also have another Mimo Byzance Tenor Splash. This one I have broken myself quite recently. Still sounds pretty good, but yeah, sad times. This right here is a Sabian uh, XS20 20 inch medium ride. Um, this one was given to me by my parents as a birthday, no, wait, Christmas present many years ago. Quite nice ride, I appreciate that one. This one is the newest addition to my setup, it's another Peisty Alpha, it is a 18 inch metal crash, quite heavily broken, but sounds okay. Just gotta be careful when I choke them to not cut my hands open on these ginormous gashes. Right here is a stack trash that is made from an 18 inch stag china, the really cheap kind that doesn't really even have a line name. It's just stag and a china. And then on top of that I have, sorry about that, uh, on top of that I have a Mimo HCS 14 inch crash, which also came with the set I believe, same series as these and this. Uh, so yeah, that's stacked on top of there and it gives this really nice percussive, short, trashy sound. Use that a lot. And right here, finally, we have a uh, 16 inch, I believe, Wuhan China. Wuhan are great, they sound fantastic, really trashy, and they cost almost nothing. I think this one goes for like 30 or 40 bucks. So yeah, can recommend those a lot. This is my second one though, I've broken one before. Okay, so for sticks, uh, these are hard to read because they're very much chewed out, but believe me, these are Promark American Hickory 5A sticks with nylon tips, that's my go-to stick. Uh, after trying a lot of different kinds, these are just the ones that hold up the longest for me. I just also recently picked up these colored cymbal felts from simpad.com, it's called the Chromatics. Uh, I think that gives a really nice unified look, especially since my kit is blue. So yes. Oh, and also, if you watch my older content, then you might know that I have more pieces for this kit. I have another kick drum and two more rack toms. Uh, I simply don't have space for those right now, and also, it's really strange. Limiting yourself with fewer kit pieces uh, kind of forces you to be more creative, and I've kind of enjoyed that for about two years with this setup now. So. Yeah, might go back to the really big one at some point, though. I really like having two kick drums. So, uh, we'll see. Well, that's my drum setup for now. For my lighting situation, it's pretty janky. I've got these IKEA clamp lights that I currently have mounted to this um, microphone stand. I've also got this IKEA lamp and another one of the clamp lights right over here by the drums. So, yeah, I'm hoping to upgrade to some soft boxes one day, but that hasn't happened so far. The camera that I use to film my stuff is the Canon Rebel T3i. Okay, time for a little overview of the room real quick. This is the area where you see me standing, playing all my instruments. This is a black um, bed sheet from Ikea, that I'm strung up for that nice black abyss. Over here we got a bed that I just recently got in here, because I like laying in bed when I'm uh, mixing, video editing, stuff like that. Here's my wall full of posters and stuff, uh, mostly anime stuff, also some stuff like this proud image of me with the big boys. Um, not gonna go through in detail what each poster is from, but here you go. Uh, right here's my keyboard behind the second Black Abyss, which is for my drums. But yeah, keyboard right there. Drum set right here. Just standing on another one of those black uh, bed sheets from IKEA. And, uh, these are my guitars right here. Behind them is a huge wall of uh, figure boxes, and um, they are actually blocking my Steinsgate posters right here, which is probably the biggest first world problem I've ever heard. But still, it's a problem. <laughs> I don't know where to put those boxes. This is where I was sitting until just now. As you can see, I've got uh, acoustic panels on all the walls here, as well as this thick, bushy carpet. And if I go in here, right here, I've got these thick uh, curtains that I can actually hang up on these hooks, one from that side as well, which essentially turns this corner into a vocal booth, which is very nice. 
All right, so that concludes my studio tour. Um, I hope I covered everything in a satisfactory manner. If I missed something that you'd like to know, just let me know in the comments, and I'll do my best to reply to it today. And, um, yeah, that's it for this time. I'll see you next Saturday with um, the start of the next bunch of Toho covers, like I promised. So, yeah, until then, have a good time. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.